Good morning, good morning, and rise and shine, everybody. It's day five. I can't believe it. We've made it through. Monday through Friday, we're here. Day five, my name is Jeff Abramowitz, and I'm the public policy chair of Coalition on Adult Basic Education, also the co-chair for State Advocates for Adult Education Fellowship Program. And I can't believe we made it through a week. It's so, It's been so great. Um, every week I've started my my week off with a few cups of coffee to get us going. And, uh, and we're here finally after uh, what's been just a tremendous amount of activity all across the United States. I'm so proud of everyone that's been involved in this project. And every day we've been getting started off by just talking about some awesomeness that's happened. And we'll go through and talk about a week in review. We have a few guests on today. I want to make sure that are present, um, that we get to, because I know some are on some limited time schedules. But I want to give a shout out, especially to a few people. One at the very beginning is CoAve. Um, the CoAve leadership has just been amazing this week. They've um, Sharon Bonney, um, her entire team, a big shout out to Lindsay Lord, who's been kind of helping us behind the scenes navigate all of this. And it's just been it's just been tremendous. It's been really great. I also want to give a big thank you to RTI International, who helped us uh, giving us a venue for a few days this week. And we were able to broadcast right from their uh, their offices in Washington, D.C. So thank you, RTI, for helping us out. Um, we have so much to get to today. I know some people are on some limited time schedules. And I want to really get to a few of them right now. Uh, uh, Anna Bedoya and Sarah Hagegi are our first guests today starting us off. And I want to call both of them on um, because Anna, I know, is on a short time schedule. And I want to make sure we hear all of uh, the awesomeness that she's got to talk about. But Anna is uh, the media designer at Pima Community College. And I am super proud to say she is a 2023 uh, SAFE Fellow for the COE program. And Sarah, um, Sarah, I don't even know where to start to introduce you because she's Advanced Refugee Education Program and a coordinator at Pima Community College. She's a past co fellow. She's um, the Advocast co-host, and she's a rock star in this field. And I just i am so grateful. How are both of you? Good morning, everybody. I'm, I'm doing well <laughs> and happy Good. to be here. Awesome. Hi, Sarah. How are you doing? Hi. Good morning, everyone. Rise and shine. Early there in the you... morning. See, Sarah's got it down. She's getting everybody out of bed today. Um, and I want to kick it off and start with you because I know that, um, you know, you are a safe fellow and our safe fellows this week have just been They've launched into a different atmosphere, and I didn't understand the gravity of it until this morning when I opened my computer up and got an email, and the email talked uh, showed our Padlet of all the work that was being done across the country, and much of it from, from our co fellows, our SAFE fellows, and all the proclamations and meetings and, and just uh, even some videos that came through I'm going to share. But Anna, can you just tell us a little bit first? The work that you do at Pima Community College, can you tell us about that and then go right into why, um, what happened this week and what was the experience like? Uh, okay, um, I'm starting at Pima as a student, as an um, English language student. And then uh, I have my background in graphic and web design. So I start volunteering and getting involved every day with adult ed because um, it really opens my doors in this country. It was a huge like a springboard, a springboard for me. So I, I I just fell in love with adult ed. I didn't know about before and I just fell in love and um, um get a really like uh, excited about how adult ed uh, helps our community. So I met um, great people like Sarah, that is a huge mentor for me, and uh, other people in Pima. And now I um, work as a media designer with that wow. department. So, and, so tell us, what do you do as a media designer for your program? So I do the old social media posting. I do um, internal design like uh, brochures, uh, flyers, uh, I take photos, <laughs> I speak yeah. with students. I'm also a student ambassador leader. 
So I have a lot of contact with other students and uh, to share, encourage them to share in their stories, um, to speak loud about uh, adult ed and uh, abdicating it. So, so Anna, that's just, that's incredible. So we all know, I think everyone that's listening knows that the, uh, that adult education really, it's all about stories, right? If the better we tell our stories, uh, the better um, people listen, and that's how you make change happen. So I'm curious, um, can you tell us a little about your, your journey as a safe fellow and, and maybe a story that really sticks with you or resonates with you, you want to share with our, our viewers? Oh, okay. Well, there is a lot of stories. To tell. <laughs> and uh, as a safe fellow, um, I thought it was to be hard, but fortunately, I I I have a team to um work with, and um it has been amazing. It's a little bit scary for me sometimes. But they give me all the confidence and uh, the push that I I need, and uh, I know uh, now that abdicating is no super difficult. It's not like a hard, a very hard task. So with a little action, you can uh, start like a chain of actions, and that's great. It's 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 very um exciting to see the that we plant seeds and uh, they're going to start growing. Um, I love it. What did you do this week? Can you share as a safe fellow and as somebody that I know Pima College does so much um, getting out there for adult education and family literacy week. What, what was it that you did this week that kind of got you excited? Okay, so uh, I went to the Flagstaff City Council uh, meeting and um received the a proclamation from the mayor the mayor and that was very really exciting <laughs> really I that bet. Was, uh, yeah they recognize the importance of adult ed um in Arizona and um sp uh, specifically in uh Flagstaff and uh, I was there with the director and uh, instructor of uh Coconina program and uh I freak out <laughs> <And> well, <laughs> talking, but they jump in and and help out, and everybody was um amazed of the of uh, know about adult education because uh, a lot of the people in the meeting didn't know uh, about that. So That's that was so exciting. Uh, also, we're jumping on the social media campaign, and I know in the centers that are making activities. Um. Uh, I just got yesterday, last night, like uh, information from Rio Salado, uh, uh, a lot of things that we are gonna post today. In the that is, that's just fantastic. I think that you know, and you, this is what you do. You get people, you get stories out there in the social <laughs> in the social media. What a great thing! So I, I know we only have another minute or two with you, but I'm curious about your experience as a safe fellow and. Um, what did you what have you learned? Like what's the big takeaway as you continue your journey uh, through Pima Community College and adult education? Um abdicate, speak out loud about um adult ed and um I don't know, spread the word, <laughs> the word spread to the, the word. world and yeah, and get as much people engaged in a board to the to the adult education um community. I love it. I love it. So Anna, we're so proud of you as a safe fellow for all the work that you've done this year. And your advocacy work has just been remarkable. We we so appreciate you. And we know you're in good company. I know that you do some work with um with our our your your guest that's on today with Sarah and Pima Community College is one of the biggest voices in our country supporting adult education for both English and non-English uh, speakers, which is really super important as well. And we're glad that you're you've raised the bar, and we hope that you'll continue to to get them stay involved, to advocate, to stay on social media, to spread the word, and to tell the stories of all those that you work with. And you're doing amazing work. We're so so proud of you, and thank you for being a fellow with us this year. Thank you guys for all your support and for all this um this opportunity. It, it's great. I'm I'm so proud and I will keep on it.
You should be. You should be. We know you're on a time crunch, so if you need to bug out, go ahead. But I want to get to uh, your your uh, cohort, your uh, your um, companion in crime there, um, Sarah. Um, it is great to see you, Sarah. And I, boy, where do we even start with you? I know that um, you have just been this. Um, you started with the Safe program, and that's how you and I first met. And then we started doing Advocast, which has just been remarkable. I'm going to have you talk about that in a second. But can you tell everybody um, what do you do at Pima Community College, and like what is it that drives you, get you out of bed every morning? Yeah, sure. Hi everyone, and hi Jeff. It's always good to talk to you. Um, I work at Pima Community College here in Tucson, Arizona, and I'm an instructional manager overseeing our literacy level um, English language training. Um, a lot of students that they come with um, refugee background that they didn't get the opportunity to um, receive any sort of formal education in their native language, um, or a lot of non-refugees who um, are at a level that um, their English ability falls on their literacy level. They come to our program and we train them from literacy level all the way to the advanced level of language learning. And then beyond, we, we try to help them to pursue um, their high school equivalency and get some college credit and they get IET training and stack all those credentials and get ready for college and career and build a life here in our community. Wow, that's just, it's amazing. Well, the work you do there is incredible, but Pima Community College has really been, you know, at the forefront of this, as I said, in, in adult education for both English and non-English learners. And I'm so proud of the work that you've done. So you were one of our first fellows in, in the program. And I'm curious if you could talk a little bit about your experience. And you obviously have have advanced and you've, you've remained with CoAve in so many significant ways. And we'll talk about the podcast and stuff, but what has it mean, meant to you to be a fellow? And what have you gotten from the experience? Absolutely. So I just wanted to mention that everyone, all the state fellows, they, they feel the same way that Anna is feeling or was feeling at the beginning. There is all sparkle at the beginning you're excited about advocacy you care you want to do something for your community but then you don't know where to start what to do and you just need to learn a little bit you just need to um, have a mentor to take your hand and guide you and be scared at the beginning am I doing a good job uh, what should I do next and all of that was provided to us through the first cohort that I went with the state um, with the safe training that um, you, Jeff, you um, coordinated. And that was an amazing opportunity to learn about advocacy, to learn what to say, what to do, how to create your group of support, how to build a community and a village that can help you throughout the year, not only one week of adult education and family literacy, um, and then train um, the whole community to learn and to do um, support adult education, basically. It's great. So we're talking, we're here really because of Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. And I know that Pima Community College makes this a big deal. Like they really have a lot of things going on. Can you share with us maybe some of the things that happened during the course of this past week? Yeah, definitely. So we are very excited that we are hosting um, a lot of social media campaigns um, in our community college. A lot of our uh, students, they prepared why adult education is important to them. Um, they shared their stories and we are sharing all their stories, all their work from all levels, from literacy levels of language learners, all the way to to um, to even uh, native English speakers that they found adult education as the only or second opportunity to live a better life. So we are sharing all their success stories and all the work that they do during that time. In addition to that, um, we are celebrating uh, two of our wonderful representative state, state legislators, representative and a senator, um, um, uh, representative um, Schreiber and um, um, Senator Kaiser uh, for the 
great support that they provided last year for adult education. We are brought beyond grateful for um, the work that they do to support our lunch and learn uh, during the family literacy and, adult, um, and, and family literacy. So it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Um, and we are very excited and we are meeting with the mayors and they are acknowledging um, Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. They recognize the program that they have um, in their city and they provide their support. Wow. Yeah, it, that's it's just phenomenal. It's some great, great work. And I, I want to I want you talked about a lot of different things there that I'm curious about as you um, as you went through this journey and as you know, you were a safe fellow and now you've gone and now you're you're leading the charge at Pima Community College, um, especially for advocacy. Like, what's the secret sauce? What is it that you want educators and administrators that may be watching or listening this to know about advocating? Yeah, sure. So we should not make advocacy a big deal. It's not a big deal. It can start locally. It can start small. And it's not something that is being done one day. It's something that you you plant those trees um every single day and then they grow eventually and then you start celebrating and um, benefiting from the fruits of those trees that you planted. Um, make your connections, build, be, build relationships with state legislators, with um, other adult educators and community members. Uh, spread the word throughout the year. Do not only rely um, on one day, one week, um, and also um, build your community of support. Um, talk to your students if they want to share their stories, if they want to go to meetings with you so you're not alone. Talk to your um, supervisors or colleagues to be, um, to, be to go along with you uh, during this journey. Yeah, I love it. So it is, I think we don't think enough of advocacy of, about really relationship building. It's about cultivating relationships and connections so that, you know, you can get people and share pe with people stories uh, because the, the word advocacy really equivalates, equivalent is the equivalent of a story. It's telling someone's story to change, to make change happen. And the better, uh, the more stories you have, the more you're able to relate to them. But it's also about relationship building. And when you can put those pieces together, um, that's just a triple win. You have, um, you and Aaron uh, Verbornik have done a remarkable job. And I cannot, um, I cannot leave any conversation without talking about the great work you've done with the Advocast podcast. Can you tell everybody what that's all about, how they might be able to listen to it? Absolutely. So it all started with the first cohort of um, SAFE. Um, that also opened this opportunity for me to um, make friends with other state advocates from other um, parts of um, the country. And Erin and I clicked on first meeting so we started talking we started talking about our passion about listening to different uh, podcasts we talked about our um, um, passion for advocacy and we started searching to see if there is any podcast about um, adult education advocacy um, and we couldn't find any um, and we decided to start our own, why not? And then um, we talked to Sharon and as supportive as she is, she was like, I think Coeb would be able to help you with creating this wonderful podcast. And we started, we started this podcast to talk about advocacy, um, sharing the good work that all the programs do all around the country, bringing students, talking about their, um, um, success and how adult education um, helped them to build a new life. And um, it's very inspiring to me and Erin, and I'm sure to all of our listeners. And we all learn from the experiences of all the programs that um, they were able to um, build that foundation in that uh, area and create um, a wonderful work that they do. So it's awesome. So the Advocast podcast 
is something that you really need to listen to because once you do, you're going to get hooked on it. And there, it's really super easy to listen to it. If you go to the Koei website and uh, you click on where our podcasts are, it's right there. And you just click on it and you'll see all the episodes and, and listen to them. I promise you, it's worthy of a listen. It's also on a lot of the your favorite podcast stations. So you can Google it, but it's at the cast. And Sarah and Aaron, congr- Sarah, congratulations. You and Aaron do a remarkable job on all that i'm so proud of both of you um just one last before we end and i just curious um if you had um you know cha- making change happens hard it really takes time and effort and really being intentional about it but as you leave adult education and family literacy week is there some message that you like out there to share to legislators to other teachers and instructors around the country and to students that are going through this journey Absolutely. So um, do not forget that today is not the last day of advocacy. Um, It continues throughout the year. Remember that tomorrow we still continue to work for adult education. We need all the support. We need all the funds. Um, And we, we want all the world to know what we do, how we contribute to this community. It doesn't end today. I love it. Sarah, you're um, not only you're a rock star in the field and you're also a good friend and I appreciate all the work that you're doing. So um, thank you so much for taking some time today for us. Um, you and Anna are amazing. Um, if you want, if people wanted to get hold of you at Pima Community College, how would they get, how would they reach or get some more information about the work you do? Sure. They can go on Pima Community College's website pima.edu and search for adult basic education for college and career and our names the name of our programs are all there and they can reach me to my social media they can search for sarah hagigi and um i will be happy to provide any um additional information if needed i love it, I love it. sarah if you can before if you're going to stick with us if you're can you just make sure that you throw your email or uh, if you're willing to in the chat box so everybody will have it yeah um, sure. thank you Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today. We're going to get to our next guest, Delia Watley, in in one second. Delia, if you want to pop on, you're welcome to. I'm really excited. Thank you, Sarah and Anna, for sharing your stories and your passion with us. But there is so much going on that all this week. I just want to highlight one thing, one or two things. Um, Today, uh, today there's a few things. At 1 o'clock, there's a link session. You can come on, Delia. That's fine. There's a link session at 1 o'clock. And at 1 o'clock, we're going to be sharing a little bit about what um, in the links uh community practice for correctional reentry education we're talking about safe the safe fellowship program uh we're talking about the um i'm sorry criminal justice and afl week in light of criminal justice and what's been happening behind and beyond the walls of our prisons and jails so check out that at one o'clock and also at two o'clock you don't want to miss it all of our co safe fellows are going to be on and we're going to be sharing more about um all the great work that they did um during the course of this week and out, actually throughout the course of the whole year year um, Delia Watley is on and so excited to have a discussion with Delia. She's the AEL pro, um, grant program strategist at Irving ISD. And how are you? Thank you for taking time today on this Friday. I am doing well, Jeff, and great seeing you again. It Just is happy great. to be here. It's great seeing you. So why don't you tell everybody like a little bit about what you do? Well, I am the Director of Adult Education and Literacy for Irving ISD. I have been for over 21 years. Um, Our program started with uh, going throughout the community, teaching technology skills to all of our community members, including churches and everything. And as time went on, we saw that there was an English language gap in our community. So we didn't want anybody to be left behind, which is our mission. And we began teaching ESL classes. Well, since then, as we joined the Adult Ed Consortium, we now provide uh, ESL classes, GED, technology classes, workforce training classes. Um, And we serve maybe about a thousand uh, students a year. Uh, We're in Irving, Texas, which is a very diverse community. We used to be the most diverse community in the United States, but I believe that there's a city in California that may have got us beat down. But um, we have many, many immigrants that come into our community, including those internationally trained professionals. So we have offerings for them as well. 
And so this is a service to me, uh, uh, the work that I do. It is service oriented. Our staff, they all feel the same way. Our clients, which are our students, um, we give them the best customer service every day and they feel welcomed in our community of learning and practice. So, so Jerry, you could you could just drop the mic right now and just you can go off at this point. That's <laughs> that's crazy good. So much, so much great work that that you've done um at your agency and with your staff. You mentioned something that really struck me, which was the reality that, you know, um, this is a passion profession. This is a, a, a profession where we all know because of funding, the funding streams that are available, that we're not making millions of dollars in this field. We're doing it because it's what drives us. It's helping people. It's it's showing, you know, giving them that direction. And there's so many things I'd like to unpack in what you talked about. But I think the first thing I want to talk about was something you mentioned about the digital literacy and showing, uh, helping people understand how to access and use the digital literacy tools that are out there. Um, can you talk a little about how important that is in the scope of adult education? Well, we knew when we began teaching classes and teaching our learners, we knew that if you did not have those techniques, technology skills and um, get up to date with uh, the computer and the new software that changes every day, every time you look around, it changes, um, that you were going to fall behind in a competitive workforce. And so um, pretty much anything you do uh, will be related to technology now, uh, just talking on the phone, um, trying to uh, make an appointment with a doctor, uh, you know, uh, going out leisurely to movies, everything's technology. And so, you know, to help our learners who are already coming in with some deficit because uh, they need some type of training or maybe educational skills are low, to teach them these digital literacy skills, I think will give them a jump up in the world of uh, work and competition. Yes, yeah, so much of the careers, so many of the careers that are out there require some digital literacy skills. And with the Digital Equity Act that's now in play, um, it, it's really, really super important that we uh, we all get to the table. You know, over the next uh, several months to the next few years, we're going to see a lot of money being spent on digital literacy and digital mm -hmm. access and giving people an opportunity. And it's programs like yours that are going to open the door to people for not just that job, but that true career pathway where they right. really can be successful in the, as uh, as they progress through their career. And, and for the longest time, honestly, our education systems and our labor systems haven't really talked very well. And now they're kind of blending together. And it's remarkable to see. It's more, Correct. So and Jeff, I want to invite everybody to read uh, the digital literacy resource paper uh, that Barbara Bush, the Barbara Bush Foundation came out with that has a ton. And I'm not saying this because I worked on it with them. But um, because it's a great paper to read for all of those that want to implement technology skills into their program, it links to many, many resources uh, for students. Um, and that's the resource tool uh, that the Barbara Bush Foundation has. Before we get off today, we're going to make sure that that tool, the link, uh, finds its way into our chat box. So we'll make sure all we right. share that with everybody. There you go. So uh, so we're here for Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. And I talked to Sarah and, and Anna, and it's really all about stories. Um, advocacy, advocacy is sharing stories of our students, of our teachers, our successes, and really making change happen. And I'm just curious that so you do so much great work. Are there any stories that kind of the ones that drive you out of bed every morning that you think about and say, wow, this is what keeps me going? <laughs> well, we just had a recent story. We were uh, conducting registrations and a middle-aged lady came in um, and she had her grandkids, she was taking care of her grandkids. And she had told us over the past year, her mother passed away and her husband passed away. And she said, but before they did, they made her promise that she would get her GED, her high school diploma. And so she found our way in our program. I said, well, guess what? You kept your promise. You're here and now you're gonna get your GED with us. So that to me was quite emotional, <laughs> but we have wow. stories like that all the time in our, in our classes, yeah. 
Yeah, it's so important to be able to tell those stories and to get the word out so that people really see the impact it has on people's lives, like really making change. You also live in a really different, difficult environment, which is quite different than some communities and also very similar in the sense that a lot of your learners are not English speaking and are trying to um, learn a different language coming over. Can you talk a little about the challenges that some of your learners face that are not English speaking and what you guys do to try and overcome some of those challenges? Correct. You know, we take for granted that we're able to come in and we can link to services that will help us. We can link to network, um, a, a network of people that can help us. But when those that come in from different countries, they don't know how to maneuver and navigate uh, throughout society. And so we have to teach those skills to them first. Those are just the basic skills on how to navigate through the services that are offered. They're in a new country and, and that operates differently from the country they came from. Um, we just had a uh, student receive the uh, Texas Workforce Commission Scholar of the Year Award. Well, she had been moved to Iraq. That that was not the home that she wanted to be, the, uh, the country she wanted to live in. And so she made her way back to America at age 18 and found her way to our programs. And so when she, uh, uh, received uh, uh, preparation. She received her GED and received college ready scores on all of her exams. Um, but this was an immigrant coming in, even though she was born in the US, she had moved and she was there for most of her life and she had to come back. And we helped her um, as she made her way back and settled in. And those services, I've been on the bus. Um, we've had some folks from Cambodia uh, two sisters, and they didn't know how to the, how to use the bus transit system. And so I was on the bus transit system with them uh, and their aunt, <laughs> wow. showing them how to get around the community and things like that. So basic things like that are what they need. And then we have those internationally trained professionals that I mentioned to you that come already with degrees and certifications that we in America can use, especially in our health system and our education system. Well, these folks limit uh, are limited in their English skills. And so we develop classes around teaching them the workplace English literacy skills for them to be successful uh, in education, um, helping them get their credentials and translating the tra uh, their transcripts um, and to help them be better citizens, ta uh, tax paying citizens here in the US uh, to help our economy. That is just tremendous. So it's a really, um, it, it's really hit home for me over the last few years, in particular last year or so, year and a half, as I have family that um, is from Ukraine. And um, all our, all our, you know, the people immigrating from um, Ukraine that are coming here in the United States and the struggles that they have, and just the wealth of talent um, from that people, international um, students have coming over, and we get them into our ESL classes. They have such value here for us, and mm -hmm. they are they are that untapped talent pool that that we need to get involved in. Your, your, your actually. The work you're doing is, is going so far in helping them reintegrate and get back on their feet. Um, we're here for Adult Education Family Literacy Week, and I'm curious, like, is there a message that you um you like to share with legislators, with um with even teachers, other people out there that are doing some of this work that um it really sheds light on the real importance of adult education? Well, as we are wanting to build our economy and fill jobs, you know, now we have a, a load of jobs that are not filled, but we have these folks that we can use and utilize in these jobs. If only they had the right training, if only they may have built up their uh, basic uh, development skills, their reading skills, their liter literacy skills, these are adults that could actually be productive in building up our economy. So this is something that everyone, including our legislators, our uh, businesses, our community organizations, everybody should be concerned with. Everybody should be on board with helping us fill these spaces and fill these vacancies because this will only help our economy. So, you know, it shouldn't be hard to, to give them a reason why you need to support adult education and literacy. You have a, a slew, a slew of, of 
folks that need these services and that could be your best employees in your companies. And so that's why when we have, you know, Adult Education and Family Literacy Week, it's something that we celebrate uh, every year. We started, well, I say every year. Um, we started last year really uh, creating big, you know, major activities around this that we include our legislature. You know, we had the Dallas County Commissioner come and present mm -hmm. to our students. Terry Meso, House Representative, come and speak um, to students. Um, we have community organizations like the McKesson Corporation, both of our chambers, uh, the mayor. Everyone knows about adult education in Irving. I don't know about everywhere, <laughs> but they know about adult education in Irving because we make it known. We help them to participate. You know, sometimes it's hard if you just say, hey, come and visit a class. But if you say, hey, come and speak and be a presenter uh, at this function, you know, we're going to have a lot of, especially when it's uh, voting season, um, we're going to have a <laughs> lot of students here in these programs or whatever, and we'd like you to be a part of this big day for us. We're going to have communications there. We're going to, you know, have pictures taken. That's what they want to hear. And then guess what? When they come, then we show them some of the classes and some of the programs and help have them meet and talk to our students. And that's when they fall in love. And that's when we build support for adult education. Yeah, that's where the rubber meets the road. When when you have people, whether legislators, mayors, whoever they are, even people that are in the administration of you know the, the, the government come in and they sit in those classes and they talk to your students and they see the passion that the students mm -hmm. have in those classrooms and the, the passion the teachers have for teaching, that's where things start to happen. And that's yes. where they, they really recognize it. We just don't do enough of that. But it sounds like you got it down in Irving. So we love it. We love it. Great work out there. If um we have a we have a minute or two, and I I'd love you to be able to share um just what is it going forward, like what is a win for us coming out of adult education and family literacy week? What is going to push the ball forward? What is it, what does it look like for us to uh to really um make this a successful and impactful kind of event? I think we need to continue to push uh, initiatives like the all in white paper that was just out. You know, we need to push it out and have everybody read it. Um, the new adult education caucus, uh, you know, we need to really push it and, and tell everybody because I don't know, people tend to want to come on board when they see other folks coming on board. And so both of those things and the folks and the organizations coming together, you know, um, building upon each other and um, maximizing on the services uh, that we offer not doing it independently, but doing it together in a collaboration and a partnership. And so when we do that, then we will reach more learners. We will reach more supporters of adult education. And so that's what I think this week should be about, bringing people together, collaborating, partnerships, uh, exposure, uh, all of those things to bring about awareness for adult education. I just love it. I love it. And I'll tell you, so you mentioned a few things and we only have a minute or two left, but um, we, you talked about the Barbara Bush All In uh, project and which is, is super. And I know you've been active in doing some work on, on the digital literacy front and with the organization. But yesterday they actually had the U.S. Senate Caucus for Adult Literacy. And it was uh, the co-chairs on, on that are Senator Reid and Senator Collins. And, and they they packed a room at the U.S. at the, the Capitol yesterday yesterday and it was just great to see because people were there and they were talking and they were listening and they had a tremendous panel uh, that got to share their experiences so and I, I also agree with you too that you know this is not just about hitting legislators this is about private industry sector and getting mm -hmm. them invested in all of this right and getting yes. them get let's get some skin in the game from our um That's from right. some of some of our employers that are out there and our labor, That's our right. labor field. So I love it all. Okay. So to give us one last part, your parting words, Delia, you've done some great work in Texas. Um, if we wanted to get some more information about Delia Watley and the work you do, um, how would we be able to reach you or reach your organization? Well, our Twitter handle is AEL Irving ISD. Um, and so there I post tons of pictures that are diff different and unique, but actually 
um, pictures speak more than you know our voices do. And so you, if you look through that Twitter page, you'll understand why adult education and literacy is so important here in our community. You'll understand just by seeing the smiles on the faces of the students that attend our program, how important the work is. Um, if you want to reach me, I'm at dwatley at irvingisd.net, dwatley at irvingisd.net. I placed it in the chat as well. Um, and then I want to give a shout out to the McKesson Corporation Empowerment uh, Group because they worked hard during this week with our programs sending out mentors to speak to our students. Um, I was expecting maybe one or two uh, folks from McKesson to come over. No, they sent about 10 or 15 folks over to our programs, oh, yeah. not just one day, but over the course of the week um, to talk to our students and to participate. And so that kind of dedication from businesses, local businesses and corporations, we need that all over. And uh, they get it and they participate and shout out to McKesson Corporation. Delia Wally, you are awesome. Thank you so much for joining us today and taking some time on this Friday for us. And um, we appreciate all the work that you're doing and you are making change happen, um, not only in Irving, but the, sample, the example that you're serving for all the other adult education providers across the country is incredible. So thank you. And I look forward to working with you going down the road. So Delia Watley, everybody, check it out. <laughs> and she put her email in the box. So, um, you know, ring out to her and check out her program at, um, in Irving, Texas. They're doing some great work. Um, Thanks so up today. Thanks. Next up today, we have um, so behind every organization are um, there are the two are pillars, and at uh, the NCOABE, there are uh, the two strongest pillars that we have are our president and our CEO. And I'm so grateful for uh, Shaketa Thomas coming on today, and also um, Sharon Bonney, um, who are here to share with us a, a little bit about um, the week. First of all, how are both of you? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Excuse me. Doing great, doing great. It has been a, a whirlwind of a week, but it's been a week that I mean, I, I I'm just so fortunate to be here in this space at this time and moment. So I am doing absolutely wonderful, Jeff. Thank you. So so much has happened this week, and we have so much to talk about in just a little bit. But I I will just want to remind everybody that today at two o'clock, our safe fellows from around the country are going to be on, and hoping both of you, I'm sure, will be on um, to share what this week was like and all these the the greatness and awesomeness that happened this week. But Chiquetta, I was hoping you can kick it off. You, uh, we all have expectations, I think, when we hit Adult Education and Family Literacy Week. And um, what was it like for you? You're president of COABE, probably the largest, the most, the greatest uh, advocacy organization in the adult education field. And um, I saw you with a little swagger um, yesterday at the Capitol. Um, and and there, was a, um, there was a proudness that I saw in you um, in the work that you were doing. But I'm curious, what was the experience like you in Capitol Hill and during the course of the week? Wow. You know, so for me, it, it was just absolutely amazing to be there. And I, I feel honored and, and privileged to be there. And, you know, I don't know about the swagger. And I, I called my father yeah. and, and my mother yesterday because if, if any of you know my history and my background, uh, my mother uh, got married when my parents got married young. And then my mother um, went on to have my brother and, and did not complete school and, and, and went on to get her GED. And then my father went back to school and um, was able to pick up a couple of trades um, in the city of Nashville, thank you, um, to Nashville and Tennessee Adult Education um, programs. And, and from there, they, they build themselves up, right? And, and so for me yesterday and, and out throughout the week, when we're talking about adult education and family literacy, the first schools that I went to were adult education schools. And I didn't know um, that I was there at such a young age. Um, watching my parents trying to improve upon their lives. But, you know, now in hindsight, when I'm looking back and 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 seeing what my parents and so many others um, that of my community went through, um, trying to do better for themselves and most importantly for their children, um, it just gave me a sense 
a pride, right? Um, I was just so proud to be there. And I know um, that there are still so many families um, that are impacted by um, the lack of literacy skills, which also um, is entangled with the lack of opportunities to improve upon their lives. So it just it was just an honor. And, and I felt, you know, just immense pride to be there and to really continue on the work of trying to um, bring about more support and awareness to the needs of so many American families across the nation. So um, I don't know about swagger, uh, Jeff, but it <laughs> really was just a heartwarming uh, moment. I feel like it was just full circle for me. I love it. I love it. So Sharon, um, we're going to be jumping back and forth between the two of you. So feel free uh, to, to jump in if I ask something that strikes a chord. But a lot of planning went on to into last week. Um, Coabe, I know um, Lindsay was on every morning with our, our advocacy and behind uh, with a podcast and was behind the scenes doing work. Um, how did it fare for you from your perspective as a CEO and kind of orchestrating um, this whole symphony? Um, what did it look like from your end and what did you see as the big wins this week? So Jeff, it's great to be on with you and everybody today. And, and I actually kind of want to zoom out a bit and go back to 2017 when we started the Educate and Elevate National Public Awareness Campaign. I see that Tom Nash is on and I want to give a shout out to him because he was one of the architects alongside with me while we were working on that. And um, back in that day, we were starting the Educate and Elevate National Public Awareness Campaign because no one was talking about adult education, really. The, the Back then, it was like, well, let's not talk about adult ed. Let's kind of put our heads down and hope we don't get defunded, right? Like, don't cut us. That was what that That's what we used to say. And we said, you know what? Let's be loud and proud and talk about the great work we're doing. Why are we, why are we saying don't cut us? Let's talk about what adult education does and how it's an investment into individuals and how it transforms lives and how helping people get up and out of poverty and a family sustaining jobs. And so it's been, a, it's been a journey and it has been so exciting. I've watched it you know, go from you know, just those initial visits to DC, which were awesome, where we would bring in um, the state association president, the state director, and hopefully a learner if we could, and we would bring those individuals into the Capitol. But we did that for two years until the pandemic and then we couldn't do that anymore. So then we started doing virtual visits. Um, and then we just really started to try to get even more savvy. And so we did a lot of social media campaigns and we did press releases and we did started having legislative champions. And I still remember the first legislative champion that we had. We had just two mayoral proclamations and it was through Governor Christy Noam was the first one in South Dakota. I say that because now we have over 63 legislative champions. It's amazing. I'm so proud of the teamwork. I think when I think about all of this, it's like the team. We have these amazing state advocate fellows who I, I can't say enough about because they do so much at the state level. They're in there working with their state association president, working with their state director, working with the students. And so I have so much respect and appreciation for them. And then at the same time at that national level, so Shaketa and I, and Jeff, you were there in some of these meetings too. We had the pleasure of meeting so many legislators and talking with them about the value of adult education. We had so many meetings, we had to divvy them up between the two of us, right, Shaketa, so we could make them all. And what a blessing and what a treat and a privilege to be able to do that. So I guess when I zoom out, I feel like there's so much activity taking place at the local, state, and national level. It's a huge team effort. There's so much activity taking place with national organizations like the All In, right? Um, but not just the all in there's TESOL, there's world ed there's pro literacy there's national coalition for literacy there's so many different organizations there's NASDAQ that are doing great work on this front as well, so I guess that's my big takeaway is what a team effort go team we're just getting started <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So it definitely takes a village. This is not a. This is not just a co-wave. This is a. This is an entire field, and it's bringing everybody together in one voice to tell the story of adult, ed, um, you know, adult students and adult educators and the struggles. Um, I'd be remiss to uh, Shaketa if I didn't mention Sally, and if you could talk a little bit about that because I know that's um a passion of yours. And um, can you tell everybody what the Sally program is, and and it's been so impactful. Yeah, so Sally is our State Association Leadership Institute. And, and the goal of Sally is to really um, be that professional development arm for state associations. 
um, and helping them develop their pipeline and ensuring that their boards um, have success. And, and one of the ways that we really look um, for Sally is to work closely with, with our SAFE fellows in this advocacy space and really having coordinated efforts um, to be able to move that needle in their state and secure more funding. And, and we know that it is critical because most of us here are volunteers, right? And, and we all have full-time jobs for the most part. And so when you have a group of volunteers, we have passion in our heart, but maybe not as much time time or space um, to really delve into all the best practices there may be in a state association. So Sally really does step in to kind of take some of the legwork out, to provide some of those tools and resources that state associations may need um, in order to further um, develop their programs in their own state. So we are extremely proud um, of our first cohort and we are onboarding our second cohort. And, and if you want to know more information about Sally, you can always email us at coave at info.org. We'll be happy um, to get you enrolled into the program. Um, our first cohort uh, was amazing and they really did give us tremendous feedback and felt like it was necessary. Um, a, a, very great resource for them. So we want to continue that because we want our state associations to be strong. What Sharon and I did over this last week at the national level, significant. It, it truly, truly was. But where the rubber hits the road is at the state level. Um, inside of our local program. So if we can increase more funding um, at the state level to give directly to our local programs, we can see much more immediate impact on our students. And, and Jeff, just to speak of your SAFE fellows, I just want to shout out Daniela of Indiana, who was in DC with us um, this week as well, setting up her own appointments and coming out and, and meeting different people. So, you know, between our Sally and our SAFE participants, they are really covering a lot of ground. And, and really, when we talk about the proclamations and, and all the support that we have ascertained over the last couple of years, it is uh, a, a a tip of the hat to them for all the work that they're doing. Awesome, great stuff. So we we talked a little about, and, and I, I relate to the fact, Shaketa, that a lot of this work happens in our local environments. It happens in our communities. It happens at a state level. And, um, and it's not often that you see the federal level really drive that change at a, at a local level, but we're seeing it now with the Digital Equity Act. And we're seeing it where funding is going to, over the next year, is going to be flowing down to the states for digital literacy and digital access and how important that all is in. I was wondering if both of you might be able to touch on a little bit about the, the federal things um, legislation or pieces that really should be on the field's radar screen right now. What are the things I know a little bit about the Adult Education Works Act and other things, but if you could talk about where should we be focusing as advocates this year and over, you know, to really benefit the states on the local level as well as the national audience. So you're probably aware that COEB has a digital equity campaign. So we're very excited about that. We have uh, digital change agents at the state level that are also working on this. We at COEB are, are really di diligently working away at this as well. We have a digital equity symposium coming up actually the first week it's uh, in October it's called digital inclusion week. So we have a digital equity symposium that we've worked with our digital equity advisors on and I see that uh, Jackie Aguilar is on here, so I want to give a shout out to her because she's on our team. Um, Koib is also participating in an Institute for digital equity through um, the Association for Community Colleges. It, which will then take what we learn and bring that back to our field of adult education. So there is a ton going on. What you'll see at the at the local and state level are alerts that come out from our office. And I just ask you take action when you see them. Contact your legislators. Also, you're going to hear from your state associations and from these digital change agents times when they need you to participate in meetings and be at the table. I encourage you, please do that. We're going to do everything we can at the national level to support, but we just need your help at the local and state level. And Jeff, I have one more thing to say. I see Dr. Don Finn is on. I also want to give him um, some kudos because I know he was also a part of Educate and Elevate National Public Awareness Campaign. So if I had seen him on earlier, I would have made sure to shout out to him as well. So just want to mention that. But Koib is doing a lot of work in the digital equity space, and we are really grateful to have a team of people working on this. But it's just like the, the other campaigns we've done, we, we need everybody on board. 
So Dr. Don was actually on yesterday as a co-host. So Don, you get a big shout out for helping us, helping me get to the caucus on time. So you cover covering me on the podcast. Catch, get it. Yeah, I, I think it's also very important to know, as we talk about digital equity, we really need to redefine literacy. We can no longer um, limit, it, limit literacy to just being able to read, write, or numeracy. Um, literacy now really does incorporate uh, being able to have that digital or technology skills. Most jobs today, and, and as we see in the next couple of years, over 90% of jobs will require you to have some technical skills to be able to just maneuver and, and you know, sustain and maintain employment. So um, we really do have to push that needle and really get out there before everyone to understand uh, what the Adult Education Works Act, how um, digital equity inclusiveness is so paramount and having a, a stable economic environment. So, um, so yes, we really do need to talk about digital equity much, much more. I love it. I, I love it. And, and, you know, I think the one thing or takeaway that I got in I listening got to some of the stories this week was the reality that a lot of um, that teachers and instructors and administrators are realizing that persistence for our students is not just within the four walls of the classroom, but it's what happens outside of the classroom. I have story after story about struggles and teachers stepping up and administrators stepping up to really make their students, um, to help keep their students in the classroom, to help them succeed. And um, it, it's just been remarkable. COAVE has done so much in this field. Um, in adult education and constantly is pushing the envelope with new programming, podcasts, um, all these different great things that are happening um, through COAVE. And um, a big shout out to all the leadership at COAVE, um, from Sharon, your entire team, and Chiquetta, yourself, and the entire board of directors, which really go and be above and beyond. We haven't really given them a big call out this week, but we have a, a tremendous board of directors at COAVE that are dedicated and passionate, and they're doing it behind the scenes 20 Four seven and sharing all of the, the hard work um, that's happening in the field. So uh, a big shout out to everybody at CoAbe and the, the full board and everybody that's been on. Um, we have about two or three minutes left. And I want to give you guys last words before I conclude with what's coming up this week. But um, any last thoughts for AFL week? Either one of you. Okay. Um, I do want to say one last thing regarding a, a new campaign we kicked off, the HSC Impacts That Counts campaign. I want to thank Cheryl Hart, who's on um, through NASDA, and it's a wonderful partnership really to help local programs talk about the value of their work. So once again, just trying to give resources and tools to local programs. So I really want to encourage you to check that out. I'm going to put the link there in the chat box in just a minute. Um, but that is, that's been five years in the making, or maybe six years in the making that we've been working on getting this campaign out the door. So really, really want to mention that. And I also want to just thank Shaketa. It's an absolute pleasure working with Shaketa. So grateful she's our president and I love her vision and leadership for our organization. Well, thank you so, so much. I definitely do not do it alone. Um, Jeff, you, you're spot on. It takes a village um, to raise up a community. And, and definitely here at CoAbe, we have a great board that are so diligent and passionate about the work that we do. And I'm grateful for our members as well. Um, our members have hit the payment this week. Uh, I haven't been able to read all the posts and all the different stories submitted on Padlet just yet. But from what I've seen so far, I... I I'm humbled. Um, so thank you so much for sharing your stories and, and setting up those different events to continue to um, raise awareness for adult education and increase funding, because we really do realize that through adult education, we can just really change um, the trajectory of our society. So thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Jeff. Shaketa and Taryn, thank you so much. Um, I will tell you just on a personal note, it's been just an absolute pleasure every morning. Um, I've gotten my coffee. I've had tremendous conversations with all of our guests. So I want to give a big shout out to all of the guests beginning on Monday. And if you've not had an opportunity, I know we're going to be sharing the these uh, recordings with everybody, but they've been incredible. We've had some uh, really impactful people on, on these calls. And I want to shout out to all of our guests all week. Thank you so much for 
everything. A big thank you again to RTI International for giving some hosting space. Dr. Don Finn, always thank you for filling in for me yesterday for a little bit. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Lindsay uh, Lord for all our behind the scenes work. Don't forget today at two o'clock, Co-Abe Safe Fellows, Fab Friday with the Fellows is going to be on Facebook Live. You don't want to miss this. Trust me. I've seen some of the videos that are coming out. I've read the proclamations. You're going to want to be on today at 2 o'clock. So looking forward to you. And again, we're going to be back again, hopefully next year, doing this same thing. And want to thank everybody uh, who's been a part and been on every day. So that's it for us. We'll talk to you soon. And thanks again.